Bear With Me is an episodic point-and-click noir horror adventure game from the Croatian studio Exordium Games. Cards on the table, I was busy doing my normal shit. And these guys shot me an email offering me a key to their game. I was kind of skeptical about it because I hadn't really heard of it, but I'm not the type of person who would pass up the opportunity to gain something without, you know, putting in work or adequate compensation. So I was like, heck fucking yeah, I will play this game. Then I was struck with apprehension, an emotion usually only reserved for approaching people standing behind registers. So I started playing it and honestly, when I was greeted by episode one's title screen and this played, A phrase uh, that I say to myself often came to mind. Oh no, what have I done? I, I, I don't know what happened, there's blood everywhere! Bear With Me is heavily story-driven, and its story can be hard to piece together in the first two of the three episodes. There are a lot of themes and influences and references at play, and initially I was a little overwhelmed by it. I was already working out how I was going to express that the mix of tone was too much for me to connect with. Amber is a ten-year-old girl who awakes from a nightmare about a burning city. The monochromatic world Amber awakes to is almost equally dreamlike. She has clearly just moved to this room as made evident by her still-packed belongings. But more alarmingly, there is an anthropomorphic giraffe named Millie sitting in a chair. So you'd think, oh, she's dropped into another sort of level of sleep and this will be odd to her. But Amber speaks to this giraffe as though she is familiar and aware that this is a living, talking animal, and that's okay. Millie warns Amber that there is trouble brewing in Paper City, and that there are people fleeing through a tunnel that leads to her brother Flint's room. And speaking of Flint, he's missing. So in order to find Flint and figure out what's going on in Paper City, Amber asks a bear named Ted E. Bear, who has an office in her closet, for help. These two are the heart of this game, and their relationship at first seems to solely exploit a hard-boiled detective and damsel in distress trope, and it sort of is just that for a while. But the more this game starts to reveal itself, these things take on different meanings. The rest of the first episode mainly consists of meeting a bunch of characters who escaped Paper City and wandering the mostly empty and slightly surreal halls of Amber's house. We are initially kept in the dark a little bit, as everyone seems to know each other and have history together, but I was still trying to grapple with the rules of this world. I mean, I can deduce enough that obviously these characters are toys, and maybe Amber's overactive imagination is applying personas to them, and that the rest of the game would carry out in this fashion. But it goes a lot deeper than that, and these toy characters seem to have complex lives even in Amber's absence. By the end of episode 1, we enter this completely different world that all seems like, okay, well, is this part real? Have we gone deeper into some kind of metaphoric cityscape of a bored child? But we spend a lot of time here, exploring Paper City and seeing Amber and Ted interact with each other. Places around the city are being burned down, and the word on the street is, it's a hooded figure known as the Red Man who's responsible. We slowly work to piece together the significance of this Red Man and his connection to a local crime boss named King and a corrupt mayor. Around the middle of episode 2, I got to this kind of apathetic place because I kept trying to figure out what the developers were trying to do with this story. Like, something else is going on here and I can't quite put my finger in it. On it. Why is everything so surreal? Why is there so many jokes and pop culture references? I mean, a lot. You know anything about the Yellow King? No, really. I guess they left the thing wide open. Like, open to interpretation. Like, I get it. Stark Industries? Sounds familiar. Doesn't ring a bell. Jarvis. Sir, I'm afraid I don't recognize the logo. Yeah, that's a thing. I get that one. I guess you could say... It's just hanging around. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I remember that. You will let us pass. These are not the droids I'm looking Fucking for. stop! And also, there is a fair amount of fourth wall breaking. Like, is this also a movie that's being filmed? On top of all the layers of meta going on here, is this also a film production we are witnessing? But also, there's this surprisingly faithful and amusing devotion to it being a film noir story, starring a stuffed bear as a grizzled, drunken private eye. The case was spinning out of control. So fast, I had to hold onto my hat. Nothing made sense, and it was getting more twisted by the 
It's like I get and appreciate these influences and sometimes you guys are getting close to doing something fun with it, but I'm just a little overwhelmed and in the dark about what I'm supposed to do with all this. Is this game just like a fun, winky little play on adventure games and our expectations of the genre? I thought all of this until episode 3. Without spoiling anything, the aim of this plot comes into better focus almost immediately and all of a sudden I began to feel like I cared about the characters, even the minor ones. The steady stream of dry humor sort of slackens and I began to see that this world has stakes and there was a lot more going on than I had assumed. I had a full 180 about this game that I was ready to write off as a missed opportunity. I felt like an asshole, like a dummy, like a shit like a fucking face. Because my running theory about the, the story's endgame was that the red man represented Amber's like encroaching womanhood and the destruction left in his path was her growing up and not needing a fantasy world to play in anymore. I mean it sounds fucking stupid now, but up until this moment I didn't expect to literally shed tears over a game with a detective bear. This game gets so real and the last hour I found myself repeatedly muttering to myself, like, are, are you fucking serious? I can't believe we're doing this right now. A sentiment I repeated more audibly and emotionally once the credits rolled. Every dumb joke and interaction with Ted and Amber was building towards a legitimately powerful and bold conclusion. That justified a lot of the screwball elements I initially rolled my eyes at. Not to completely dismiss this game's sense of humor, which took me a while to get into. You just basically told us your whole life story, even though we resisted actively. I mean, I tuned out so many times. There is a lot of just family guy style, hey guys, do you know this reference? Isn't it funny that we also know about it too? It's my field hockey mask. My friend Jason wants to borrow it. As far as I'm concerned, he can have it. What's the worst that can happen? But episode 2 and 3 got some real laughs out of me. The dry, deadpan, Max Payne-esque dialogue works every now and then, and, and it's great. I would have liked more of that and less of the proving you've watched movie stuff. I've watched movies too, and not all of them are from a black market dealer. I mean my dad. This is a traditional point and click game, with sparse puzzles and a lot of item management. It makes the assumption that you're familiar with how these games work. Being a story driven game, there is a lot of dialogue and what can mostly seem like excessive hotspots to click on, to hear Amber or Ted's snarky thoughts. It's another aspect I at first found bothersome, but in retrospect I realize there was a fair amount of world building and, and little hints that were cleverly disguised as goofy jokes but in the moment I became sort of fatigued by them, and that caused me to pass over certain things necessary to advance the story or, or understand the story better. Once you get to Paper City, Bear With Me becomes much more fun to explore. It's a nicely realized place that treads a line between grimy metropolis and something silly a child would dream up. About the worst thing I could say about the gameplay is that sometimes the characters move a little too slow across wider backgrounds, but if you're traveling off screen you can double click to jump to the next area. It's standard stuff, you look at things with a magnifying glass, you touch it with the pointy finger, and you can talk to people with speech bubbles. The story is the focus though, so some of the puzzles and challenges can feel a bit like, like an afterthought, like a half measure, so that may or may not bother some. I found that for the most part they're pretty organically ingrained in the story, and none of them are really intimidating. I mean you could always look up a walkthrough. I won't judge you for that. I will however judge you on a laundry list of other things, like whether or not you've succeeded in finding happiness in this world. And nothing pisses me off more than people who manage to work that shit out. There is one puzzle towards the end that literally has you going back and forth between reflections of Amber's subconscious to piece together a memory, and I, I found that to be a really elegant and charming way of portraying that. You make the puzzles part of the story. You hear that, designers? You pricks! Disrespecting me. Disrespecting my intelligence. You don't gotta make a kooky lock all the time. You tell a story with that shit. Uh... Hey guys, <laughs> look, uh, fun, um, I recorded this video a while ago, um, and I just wanted to come clean because I do remember there being some kooky locks that uh, were kind of just there to slow you down, and I didn't want to represent myself as a hypocrite by saying that there weren't. Uh, so, just wanted, you know, full disclosure here. Um, I'm not in the bathroom though, so don't worry about that. <laughs> it's just that I've been waiting for these tapes for like 40 minutes. I am not wearing a watch. Yeah, I don't know if you understand how this works. You're on, like, the other side of the fucking globe. It's gonna take a while to doctor up some permits and get this... Get the fucking Jesus H. Hit the deck. 
Look, I'm gonna give you guys like 20 or 30 more minutes, and if I don't hear from you, I'm gonna watch Unsolved Mysteries until I pass out. Ugh, <sighs> bads, right? Bear With Me has a very unique look to it. It's this very clean, mixed media look that includes quirky hand-drawn characters and detailed backgrounds that have elements of reality, but also elements that cement that this is indeed a paper city, something a child would make for a class project or something. It's sort of cutesy, but I think that's exactly what it needed to look like. There is a childlike logic to a lot of the design decisions. It's like if you asked a kid what a casino or a police station would look like, this is probably how they would render it. It's close, but has a touch of whimsy. Amber's demeanor in certain scenes suggest a child's indifference or reluctance in understanding certain things about the world, and that is reflected in this paper world. I'm not saying this game looks fantastic, but that it looks the way it should look, if that makes any sense. It looks like the way it looks was intentional. It was a choice and not a fault of the developers. Voice acting is great pretty much all around. Ted has his gravelly, downtrodden detective voice down to a T, it is said when a man loses his way, he often finds salvation in things he never considered before. Uh, seems right up my alley. Amber's voice shows a youthful confidence being used to mask a deeper vulnerability. It's a suicide mission. I don't care anymore, B. I'm going to stop him once and for all. All those people that had suffered because I was afraid. And all the minor characters have pleasant, cartoony voices that reflect their occasionally adorable personas. I don't know much about this game's production cycle, but it almost seems like they got better as the game moved forward. Jokes started landing more often, and emotional beats were more engaging. It's like it slowly began growing up the more I unraveled it. I really enjoyed the soundtrack as well. It's a pretty spot-on tribute to the somber jazz of film scores like Elevator to the Gallows and The Man with the Golden Arm. It's gritty, dark, dirty, and unforgiving. But most of all, it feels alive. It's almost as if the city itself could be a main character in some forgotten script on the desk of a writer who shot himself before he could write an ending. It's so great that it makes the sort of bizarre title screen theme seem out of place. Like after completing the game and understanding it fully, I think it deserves better than that. It's like it's trying to be creepy, but... Any other piece of music from the soundtrack would have felt more appropriate. The game's creepiness is more effective because it doesn't put it out on Front Street and hammer it to death early on. Its creepiness comes from the way it manipulates you and uses this noir trope as a smokescreen over some devastating real-life shit. So I thought that was just a little on the nose when it could have produced an effective dissonance to just have an upbeat jazz number in its place. Though I, I, I think if a game's title screen song is what I've most harshly criticized, I probably think your game's pretty neat. This is a first for me. I was nearing the halfway point with this game and I already had my mind made up about it. I was kind of bummed that I couldn't connect with it and fully grasp where it was going and I saw a lot of potential in it that I, I felt like it was actively squandering. But once I did connect, I had a strong emotional reaction to it. The kind reserved for every time I pass by the video game section at Target and see a case full of Battlefront 2 and Call of Duty World War 2 and I feel like the world could be engulfed in flames and all I'd feel is something like relief. Bear With Me is a surprisingly wonderful and charming story with cute character design, a great jazz soundtrack, and tons of witty back and forth between two likable leads. I want to see more from these creators. It certainly suffers from a lethargic first couple hours where it seems to be finding its footing, but if you make it past that and the ridiculous title song, it really starts to come together and it might sneak up on you, much like it did for me, which is impressive because I am very stealthy. This better be good news. I see. Look, I, I want you to know I understand you're going through a bit of an ordeal at the moment, so don't take this the wrong way. Okay, thank you for watching my video. Um, I've noticed there's a, there's a lot of new faces, and I, I, I suppose I have to thank Mandalore Gaming for that, for uh, giving me a nice little shout out in his video. And, as you, and go watch his stuff. Well, you probably came here straight from his channel, so continue watching his stuff. And continue watching my stuff if you want. I got kind of a shitty release schedule and, you know, the quality of my videos vary sometimes. But, I mean, if, if you're here already, like, I'm sure you like something about me. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I'm trying to say thanks. Uh, so yeah, thanks, thanks again, Mandalore Gaming, and thanks to all my new subscribers. 
Wow, it sound, for a second there, I sounded like a, like I was a real YouTuber. I'm about to dip into that one more time by saying you could support me on Patreon because I have no money and it would be cool if I had some. And also, you know, because you like what I do and you want me to continue doing it. And I spend like every spare minute I got doing this and also a podcast I do uh, with an adorable lady named Paige and that, that we release a podcast every Friday and you can listen to that. It is called Have a Mice Life and it is about Disney stuff, uh, lesser known Disney stuff like straight to DVD videos and comics. Yeah, that's every Friday. You can listen to that on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, uh, and also on our YouTube channel. We do like sort of half-assed Let's Play things. There's no release schedule to that. It's just like we, we were playing a game and I decided to record it. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this journey of my little channel. I hope to see you guys stick around. I hope you don't unsub me. That'd be tragic. Is that is that gonna, if, if if you're already supporting me on Patreon? Thank you so much. It, it's an honor to have you as my patron. I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll love you, I'd do anything for you.